So we end our turn and bam, positive two million. And you're sat there thinking, oh no, but what about all that debt? And I just press the end turn button and it's a very simple question of, well, I don't know what debt you're talking about because suddenly our negative 1.8 million debt is completely removed. And now we're into positive 1.9k as we now have infinite money, ladies and gentlemen, to do with as we please. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Spiffin' Brit and today you join me in the wonderful game of humankind. That's right, today we're breaking this perfectly balanced game, which is so perfectly balanced it even features myself but as you can probably guess from the title of this video yes this game has a few glaring minor imbalances that can ever so slightly be exploited to you know completely and utterly destroy every single bit of balance in the known universe and today i'm going to be building a monstrosity by picking all of the completely overpowered and broken cultures one after another destroying all balance in the game and then going on to show you how you can use a fantastic integer overflow exploit to generate infinite money that's right ladies and gentlemen the spiffing grit has found yet another way to generate infinite money, because I mean, I'm pretty sure I discover one of these about every five minutes. Anyway, it's time for us to jump into this lovely game, so make sure you're sat back, relaxed, and you have a nice warm cup of tea in hand, as things are about to get very spicy. If you're feeling especially fantastic, you can even like the video. Now it's time for us to break a game. So, welcome ladies and gentlemen to our start. We are playing as the Egyptians. I've basically skipped through the entire Neolithic era, because it's very simple, just a lot of auto-exploring, and this is the start that we've ended up with. This is basically the the exact start that you want when you're a player who likes to cheese the game. Why is that? Well, we have ourselves access to a whole bunch of ebony. Now, ebony on its own isn't exactly a crazy resource. Just an increase in industry is relatively okay, but what makes ebony so overpowered in your starting zone is that you can 100% exploit and cheese it using this lovely bad boy here, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Don't you worry, we'll be rushing that bad boy so that we can break the game. Now, a lot of the early game is basically just exploring, getting our empire up and running as fast as possible. We want to get ourselves to a second city nice and quickly, and of course we want to make sure that we control every single bit of ebony deposit that this map has spontaneously produced. So that means we need to get ourselves another outpost built here and an outpost built here. But until we run into another AI that we actually need to compete against, it isn't the end of the world. And fantastic, I think we found the two other remaining ebony deposits in the game, meaning we'll be able to control all six deposits, which is fantastic, as that's going to allow us to pretty much break every single ounce of balance this game has. Right, now what I've done is I've saved up enough influence so that next turn I can pick up our first natural wonder. Now we want to grab this before the AI does, which means we kind of want to delay actually having a second city just so that we can grab the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Now the reason why we wanted the Hanging Garden so early on is because the Hanging Gardens provide one very very jazzy benefit. They will extract any luxury resource that they're sat on and provide the wondrous effect, which is usually only an effect that you'll get later on into the game. But what this effect does is it's going to allow us to have an increase in industry on all of our cities, a plus 30% increase in fact once we hold all of the ebony deposits. And there we go, we've built the first wonder of the world, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, giving us 100 fame but most importantly giving us the wondrous effect from ebony. Now because we're free of these luxury resources we're able to gain 15% more industry which is very nice but of course it can be improved. Meanwhile Febus has expanded and Alex Mechanet and we're getting a whole bunch of luxury resources online over here as well as Obsidian which is a fun little resource that we only have one of but that's an additional plus plus 2% industry. And now that we have also our lovely outpost of Markeb set up here, we're able to start actually extracting all of this ebony. Even though it's not attached to a city, we can begin the extraction process and this is going to start messing with our industry. As you can see, our capital city has 209 industry. However, if we simply just grab this luxury resource and this luxury resource, and then we can also swing on over here next turn and pick up this luxury resource, you'll notice that we're now up to 242 industry. This is very, very jazzy indeed. We wait one turn, we can actually pick up the final unit of ebony and we're bam now we're up to 280 industry in our capital which is pretty good considering it's 6825 bce but once again ladies and gentlemen i know this can be improved and so that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to become the strongest empire in the known universe now already we can move ourselves into the next era and even if we were to go up an era there's not exactly anyone i'd like to pick beyond the maya who are relatively fun and will help us snowball our production okay now i think i might actually be able to produce enough influence where I'm going to be able to build the Pyramids of Giza as well as the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. If we can snipe both of these wonders, we've pretty much broken the entire balance of the game, which is exactly what I wanted to do. Well, great news, everyone. We've managed to actually secure ourselves the Pyramids of Giza. This is going to allow us to have minus 25% district industry costs. Now, this is really, really good because it actually stacks with the Egyptians' existing modifier of minus 10% industry cost. And as we get to keep both of these for the rest of the game, it basically means districts for us are 35% 
cheaper to build, which is great when you know you're producing a lot of districts because you have a large amount of industry. And there we go, the Pyramids of Giza. As we've now built that, all of our subsequent districts are much, much, much more affordable to build, which is fantastic stuff. Uh, you know what, I've realized we are so far in the lead of any of the other AIs, it makes sense for us just to move into the next era. So we're going to pick up the Maya just so that we can have another industry snowball going, because of course, industry stack with all of our existing modifiers, which are already making us just ridiculously powerful. Now, things are starting to go rather well for us. I'd say we're pulling relatively well into the lead, but of course the exploits haven't even really gotten rolling yet. It's in this next era, the medieval era, when we get to pick the most broken overpowered faction in the game, say hello to the Khmer. The Khmer are very jazzy, they get plus three industry on all makers quarters for the entirety of the game, and plus one industry per population. They basically get a workers district, which also counts as a farmers quarter, making it ridiculously and stupidly powerful, as not only is your pop growing, but your industry is also growing at exactly the same time, making it pretty much impossible to slow you down. So what we're really just going to do is probably blitz through this area and try and get to there as fast as possible, because there really is no need for us to actually sit around and wait for the next era to come. I'm fantastic, I can claim a monument. Now of course we're going to go for the mausoleum of Harley Karnassus just because it will give us some stability and also some incredible science, so we'll just slap that down onto our capital and it should be able to do some very jazzy things. And if we just finish our turn, it should take our science from 202 to something a little bit more powerful, maybe 300, come on please be 300. And there we go, just under 300, lovely stuff. Oh, fantastic, I can actually build myself another holy site. Now there's no production modifiers for this section and honestly all of them are relatively weak, excluding of course the completely utterly broken, bear not false witnesses for plus 5 science on research quarters, which will yeet our science up into the stratosphere at 343, very nice. Right now we are actually ready to move on into the next era, but we're not going to because once again the AI is ridiculously far behind, so we're going to wait out a few more turns here so that we can turn this outpost into a city and get a few of our unique districts down. All right, we're doing quite good, went up to around about 450 science, our capital's up to 1200 industry, which is, you know, more than we ever really need. So what are we to do with this? Well, we're going to actually move into the next era, yes, once again we could stick around longer, get some more fame, but ah, what's the point? When instead we can just immediately become the Khmer and completely and utterly decimate the balance in the game. So we're bam, Khmer away! So we end our turn and we're bam, it's Khmer time. And the reasoning is very simple. One, because these guys have a very overpowered and broken district, and two, because they can build elephants that also have ballistas on them. So yes, now our makers quarters are no longer providing us just production, they're also giving us 22 food, which as you can imagine is pretty darn good. Oh, look at this one, giving us 51 production. Very jazzy, but of course our capital's not the only place that can benefit. This city can have one, we're bam, and then this city can have one, and then this city can have one. Oh, it's lovely. It gives us food, it gives us production. What more could you want? Oh my goodness, we're building a beret over here, and look at this. Four influence, 55 production, and 25 food. It is just so stupidly broken, it's amazing. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, this will improve and grow even stronger. As you can see, 1,861 industry on our capital is very, very nice. It basically allows us to construct whatever we like in a single turn. We can probably build most of the wonders in the game in just one or two turns as well. Now, the reason we're building all of our holy sites right over here in our capital is very important. We are aiming to pick up the lovely Angkor Wat, a very, very broken wonder in the game because it provides food based on the faith output of a city. The more faith you produce, the more food you gain. Equally, you can pick up the Notre Dame as well, which gives you faith based on technologies researched. And seeing as I think there's around about 100 technologies in the game, as you can imagine, that's a nice amount of faith produced. And there we go, a brand new wonder can be claimed. We're bam, we're going to pick up ourselves the Angkor Wat. Drop this bad boy down in our capital and watch all of our food problems melt away. And there we go, Angkor Wat is built. It's generating us 148 food, which is relatively nice. That brings up our total food output to 221. But of course, the more holy sites we get and the more powerful those holy sites are, the more food we generate. And of course, we can do this festival basically every five turns, which allows us to add plus five faith to all of our holy sites. And well, as we have four holy sites in our capital, you know exactly what that means. That's an additional 20 food. So why do this boring public ceremony when you get five food and instead you can have a holy day and get 20 food? Now that's metagaming. All right, we're now up to 1,000 science per turn, which basically means we've finished off the entirety of the medieval era tech tree and we should probably be leaving it relatively soon. Honestly, I love the production and our capital has gotten to the point where it's so strong we can finish four things in one turn. It's just ridiculous. Honestly, our capital has become this nightmare city of production and it's glorious. There's just no stopping us now. And fantastic, we can claim a new wonder. We're going to pick up the Notre Dame just for its incredible faith output and slam it right on down 
our capital. And there we go, Notre Dame has been constructed. This is fantastic news for us. As you can see, it's resulted in this glorious monstrosity of an Angkor Wat, which is producing 311 food. This now means that we can probably move money above food, and what's going to happen here is that the city will keep growing, despite the fact that farmers are now the least important job here. And okay, fine, I guess I do have to move into the next era, so it's time for us to become the Moogles. Yet another completely, utterly broken production sieve. And there we go, Moogles completed. And the main reason we want to be them is because, of course, they have elephants with cannons, and elephants with cannons are good fun. The tech tree for the early modern era isn't exactly anything too jazzy, so we'll just be able to blitz it in a few turns, nothing too complicated, but most importantly, we're here to build Gemma Masjid, which is basically plus three industry per workers, plus three industry per adjacent makers quarters, and uh, this basically combines into some ridiculous things like this location here, which provides us with plus 136 production. Very, very jazzy, and this plus 132, and this plus 130, and this plus 126. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. It does appear that this is going to start breaking the game, isn't it? Now, after just building a few more of these amazing Jamma Masjid, you'll notice that our production is basically up to now nearly 5,000. This is, of course, a remarkable improvement, and now it's over 5,000. Honestly, the game's just balked at this point, okay? There's just nothing we can do to be stopped. And you know what? We've got so much influence lying around, we can actually get ourselves another wonder. We're going to pick up St. Basil's Cathedral, because it gives us plus one faith per district. Now, of course, this is very, very powerful on our capital. Of course, it only takes us one turn to build, because it's a wonder, you know? It's meant to take a long time, but we have so much surplus production lying around, one turn will do. So, bam, we just pop that bad boy down, and there we go. We've built ourselves St. Basil's Cathedral, giving us 300 additional faith because of all of the amazing districts we have. This basically translates to the Angkor Wat now producing 650 food, which is more than we'll ever need. We basically don't need farmers anymore. Farmers are completely useless. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the lovely boffins at Spivko have a fantastic opportunity for you. Due to a gigantic excess in industry production, we have an endless quantity of elephants with cannons mounted to them just sitting around doing nothing. If you would like an elephant with cannon, then congratulations. The first 4,000 people to like this video will receive their very own elephant with cannon. We are, of course, in no way liable for what you do with your gigantic elephant with cannon. Just be warned it is being delivered by the Royal Mail and so consequently might take a little while to arrive. Anyway, onwards with the video. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a big turn ahead of us. Basically, we've been the first person to reach the wonderful patronage technology. This allows us to build luxury manufactories to get the luxury bonuses of all of our resources. So far, up to this point in the game, we've only been getting the amazing bonus of the ebony resource. This has basically been providing us a plus 30% industry bonus to all of our cities. Really, really good stuff. However, next turn, we're going to be building ourselves a papyrus manufactory, which will give us plus 5% science, as well as a marble manufactory, which will be giving us plus 15% industry. We'll also be building a tea manufactory, fantastic, which will give us plus 15% food, and a saffron manufactory, which will give us another plus 15% food. Then down here, we're building a silk manufactory, which will give us plus 25% production. And then over here, we're building a mercury manufactory, which will grant us a wonderful plus 10% science, 15% when we actually also pick up the other mercury deposit. And so basically, when we end our turn, we're going to become insanely more powerful. As you can see, we're making 2,600 science per turn, but most importantly, our capital is making 6,000 production. But when we end our turn, that 6,000 production becomes 8,452, and suddenly our capital is producing 1,000 food. This is because the Angkor Wat is getting insanely yeeted into the stratosphere. Look at this bad boy, now producing 780 free food, which when affected by all of our lovely modifiers makes it even more powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, we've become unstoppable. So we've only got two resources in our empire that we haven't actually maxed out. Incense and obsidian. Incense would give us more money and obsidian more production, so naturally we need to try and buy ourselves a few more obsidians from the AI. If we can do that, then ladies and gentlemen, we've got even more production. Okay, right, now that we have the money, we can go over here and we can buy the obsidian. So a bam, fantastic, this one's mine, and then this one over here is also mine. And if we have the spare money, we can even pick up the marble, which will give us another plus 5% industry. But the reason we wanted to pick up that obsidian is because now we can build ourselves the obsidian manufactory. Literally, we've just stolen it from the AI, because whilst the AI should have that obsidian manufactory, it's ours now. Right, well, I think it's time we also try and steal the world's supply of incense, so let's see who I can buy it from. There's a whole bunch of it up here that isn't even improved. And you know what, also I wanted to try and steal the world supply of gems, so uh, what I'll do is I'll actually throw myself down another city right here. We can actually found a city in this relatively odd location, immediately get ourselves some production going, and start spewing out some wonderful luxuries. There we 
go, fantastic stuff. In fact, we can do all of this in just one single turn. That's how amazing our empire is. Okay, now our capital's up to 10,000 industry, which is, um, it's okay, you know, it's, de it's decent. Okay, it's an acceptable quantity. I mean, we've hit the point where basically we can build multiple districts per turn, no matter what. So our capital is gonna kind of become an ever-expanding blob of death, uh, which is perfect. You know, I'm completely fine with that. And because that's the case, we just need to keep expanding our borders further and further, expanding our infrastructure further and further, and we'll just become more and more powerful. All right, now I think we've pretty much unlocked all of the era stars that I was looking for for this era, and also we've secured ourselves a nice heavy supply of gems, which means we should be able to also take the monopoly on gems, which will be another fantastic source of money for us. So with that, it's probably time for us to move into the next era. Now, the industrial era is interesting because there's nothing actually crazily overpowered here. The Siamese are, of course, an industrial faction, but they're not exactly an incredible industrial faction. Plus three industry per district on all cities is, you know, pretty fun, but it's not broken. And really, we have enough industry. We have too much industry. In fact, our capital city is producing 10,000 industry. This is more than we'll ever need. We can complete pretty much all of these repeatable projects over and over again endlessly. And that's fine. It just ever so slightly damages the game's balance. So instead, we're going to damage the game's balance even further by becoming the French. I know it is the worst thing any Brit could possibly do, but it's necessary because the French are a science sieve and we need to have a science sieve if we want to break the science in this game. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So huzzah, we are now the French. Wait, hang on a second, I suppose I should probably be French rather than British. Oh ho ho, Franchi time. Yes, that's right, it's Franchi time. So we're going to put down ourselves a few lovely sciencey districts like this one right here for 89 science, glorious stuff. Let's just slam it right on down. This one here for 86 science, lovely. 82, more science over there and more science over there. Fantastic stuff. Now, the thing is, you might be thinking, oh, we're going to be getting all of our science via these research districts. And um, you're wrong. Because what we can do in our capital is something very jazzy. We can convert all 10,000 of our industry into science using the scientist bonus. That's right. All industry and money become sciencey stuff. So uh, we're going to use this to pretty much break the entirety of the tech tree. So we're just going to research all of this, the scientific method. Why not? So fantastic stuff. It's ever so slightly broken because the perks of being a science or you can research one era into the future so we can research past the industrial era into the contemporary period and that means we can pick up the research institute uranium enrichment nuclear fission and then finally most importantly the fusion reactor why do we want the fusion reactor well it's plus 50 percent industry on cities and outposts how are we going to get there that seems like a lot of science well all we have to do is go to our capital here and push this big button here converting all 10,000 industry into science and we're bam now we're making 17,000 science everything is now going to take one turn to research this is a nice and powerful position to be in as we can use this to pretty much break the game All right it is 3986 bce that's right you know we're about 4,000 years ahead of jesus and uh, we're about to discover uranium enrichment which is one of my favorite technologies and there you go uranium enrichment has been researched fantastic stuff now it's on to nuclear fission in the year 3983 bce oh my oh my we've discovered this nearby barbarian outpost has access to oil oh now this i think needs to be liberated i suppose now would be a fantastic time to use our elephant cannons because why not use just a gigantic cannon mounted to an elephant well this seems like an opportune time for it and there we go the fusion reactor has been researched that's plus 50 percent industry on all of our cities meaning our capital city's industry output is now up even higher meaning our science output is now up even higher as you can see we're making 21,000 science per turn just in the capital or 25,000 science over Overall, every single technology in the tech tree is now one turn to research. And in fact, we can research multiple technologies in that single turn. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're now going to start blitzing our way through the entirety of the tech tree. So now we need to make a decision on what we want to do with nuclear weapons. And naturally, you know we're going to have a whole bunch of nuclear weapons. And the reasoning is because nuclear weapons are also going to help us break the economy of this game. Oh, and are the cannon elephants ready? They are. Oh, yes, right. Elephant cannon. Load up into this army. I've got some fun things for you to do. Oh, my God and it would appear that the opponents have decided to come out to fight the elephants in the field of battle. Well, I'm going to manual battle this one because something tells me the battle elephants are going to defeat a whole bunch of crossbowmen. All right, let's see what the crossbowmen can do. Okay, they can shoot the elephants in the flank and position themselves downhill of an elephant with a cannon. Um, well, elephant with cannon chooses to one-hit crossbowmen. Other elephant with cannon chooses to one-hit crossbowmen. And final elephant with cannon chooses to one-hit crossbowmen. Elephants seem to be nice and powerful. <laughs> oh, I love battle elephants. They're just so much fun. Okay, a few turns later, it is 
899 BCE and I've just converted all of the industry of my capital into science which has now yeeted our science right up to the rather modest 50,000 uh, which is enough to research every single thing in the game in one turn and yes I mean this late game technology here is 46,000 science meaning yes we can research it in one turn we are just that unstoppable and we're still in the industrial era and yet we're somehow able to research all of this so what happens is I end my turn and then I'm pretty sure we pick up multiple technologies in one turn so there we go there's the combustion engine there's urban planning so yeah we can do two techs per turn very nice stuff indeed we're trying to make our way over to aluminium so that I can actually start extracting it out of the ground because as soon as we can start doing that then I can start getting nuclear bombs going and when we get nuclear bombs going well that's when we actually generate infinite money and yes we're just blitzing our way through the technology tree and wabam aluminium has been researched now where are you located my lovely sweet sweet aluminium we have some aluminium oh my goodness oh we're fortunate fantastic mind it out of the ground you might be wondering why do we need aluminium well we need it because we can build nuclear bombs with it that's right we're going to be doing a fusion test now where are we going to do this fusion test well somewhere where we can choose to just destroy all of the land around it where do we have a nice little bit of sacrificial area i suppose right over here next to lake baikal which is actually a beautiful natural wonder in this planet but of course we're going to do a fusion bomb test next to it because why wouldn't you what's the point of all of these explosions if we can't even test them oh this is it ladies and gentlemen we get to do our nuclear fusion test now so we're bam we just end our turn and ah yes all of the terrain has melted away fantastic we've created a horrific wasteland now all we need to do is build an icbm but in order to do that we need oil luckily for us we have oil right here we just need to mine it up out of the ground now i guess we also need even more uranium but luckily i think we also have more deposits of uranium so let me get that out of the ground and now can we build our yes we can we can build an icbm fantastic right well we're now ready to do our nuclear fusion test so um in order to do this we actually need to start buying up these territories so uh, that's exactly what we're going to do we'll have to attach this territory this territory and this territory and uh, then we'll do a great big old nuclear detonation right here in the middle it's a full-blown icbm this time so naturally it's nice and powerful we'll just rush it to the front of everyone's production queues and see if we can get it done nice and quickly there we go next turn and we'll blow up this entire region of land fantastic and there we go all of this land is now ruined after our glorious nuclear weapons test so there we go we'll just stop the lovely scientific rush in our capital here build ourselves a missile silo and it's time for us to actually try and bankrupt our economy so there we have it we now have our nuclear missile silo now all we need to do is actually build ourselves a nuclear bomb you know we might as well move into the next era now sure we could go as the turks and abuse the overpowered public school or the swedes and abuse the really powerful research institute but instead we're gonna go for something really really dumb and stupid we're gonna go for the stupidly overpowered soviets because they get increased combat strength on all of their units and also the arms factory basically allows them to turn all of their units into unstoppable one-hitting gods so it's into the next era we go why have we done this well it's mostly so that we can steal some of these late game wonders so empire state building crest the redeemer or alternatively the wonderful sydney opera house well we'll start with the wonderful sydney opera house why not we're just going to build all of these on our capital because we can and now it's time for us to break our own economy into the ground so how on earth do you break your own economy well it's very simple for a start you're just going to need a large quantity of nuclear missiles because currently they're slightly broken at the moment nuclear missiles of course take a lot of production to make but also take up a lot of space and when units spawn in they have upkeep and upkeep very easily breaks the game as you can see our lovely nuke here costs us 90 gold per turn it's fantastic we can yeet it around drop it on a city do some very jazzy things the cities themselves of course get absolutely yeeted into oblivion and we can also build ourselves another wonder guess i can give myself a christ the redeemer why not well bam i'll build that on my capital somewhere although the nuclear missiles need to come first i'm sorry that's just how this works okay so we end our turn we'll get a few more nuclear missiles and you'll notice that they start costing a lot of money a lot of money in fact and the game's actually starting to bug out nuclear missiles um i don't actually know what the game's doing but the games oh the game wants to end i see because i put all of these nuclear missiles together and for some reason they're stacking and saying they're only worth minus nine gold which is very jazzy but of course not accurate we can buy another one of those and oh now they're worth zero this is the last turn of course now because i've become too powerful i can build another nuclear weapon and what happens here we're now having upkeep again okay minus eight upkeep and again now we're making gold okay now the army's upkeep has gone so high the army is now making money this nuclear weapon is now making us 1200 gold per turn how i have no idea but it's okay because we can build another one build this bad boy and now we're making negative 67,000 gold per turn because this army is now making minus 
99,000. <laughs> but of course, if I disband this bad boy, we're making profit again. Profit from an army. How on earth this happens, nobody knows. But basically, we're flipping the game's integers over and on top of each other, and that's resulting in us making a copiously large amount of money that completely and utterly breaks the game. Anyway, time for us to set all of our cities on Christ the Redeemer, and then end this game. Right, bam. End game. Fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, look at all of these amazing achievements we're getting. I did such a splendid job, didn't I? Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We did a fantastic job. We've built all of these amazing nuclear bombs, and well, who's saying we have to stop there? We can just balk this game even more with even more nuclear missiles, and that's exactly what we're going to do. And now we have 10 nuclear weapons. We're in a fantastic position to start breaking the economy of the game even further. So I'll just buy another one of those, and we're bam. This bad boy is making minus eight. Wait, a turn, and now we're making money off of this nuclear weapon as well. Oh, and now this is looking good. With all of these nuclear missiles lying around, you'll start noticing we're making negative 79,000. This is fantastic. We buy another one, and this is just going to keep happening. More nuclear missiles. Here they come. The more we make, the more into debt we go. And trust me, the more into debt we go, the more fantastic this is going to get. This is, of course, getting slightly ridiculous, but what we're aiming for is a negative 2 million army upkeep, because when we achieve that, the game kind of breaks. The integers flip over on their head, and negative becomes positive. So that's what we're aiming for. So another army of multi-roll fighters has been churned out, adding another minus 79,000 to our empire. This place over here can actually also start helping us out. Let's get an airport going, and I'll get another additional eight fighters going. There we go. Lovely stuff. The more we have, the better. So we're up to negative 400,000 in our capital, which is very good, but of course, it can be better. So I'm going to build a few more missile silos. I'll start spewing some lovely stuff in them. All right, we're building even more cruise missiles at an incredible rate. We're now up to minus one million, which is fantastic. We're really starting to see the money get rolling. And there we have it, minus two million. Lovely stuff. Now, all we need to do is get ever so slightly above minus two million, and something glorious is going to start happening, ladies and gentlemen. And there we go. I think that's it. Yep, that's it. It is actually now flipping around into positive. You'll notice there, even though it's showing that we're making a minus two million, it is actually now displaying that we are making plus 2.14 million from army upkeep alone. This is because we flip the integer around and it is now upside down. So we end our turn and bam, positive two million. And you're sat there thinking, oh no, but what about all that debt? And I just press the end turn button and it's a very simple question of, well, I don't know what debt you're talking about because suddenly our negative 1.8 million debt is completely removed. And now we're into positive 1.9k as we now have infinite money, ladies and gentlemen, to do with as we please. And it's all thanks to this endless quantity of nuclear missiles that we have stored up. That's right. Because our army upkeep is so high, we now perpetually have 2 million gold. And we've instantaneously achieved the merchant star. We've maxed out all of the merchant stars over and over again. And the game doesn't know how to deal with it. Right? Well, we've done it. We've got all of these amazing cruise missiles, which we can pretty much do whatever we want with. Like, for example, this lovely nuclear missile here. We can just aim at, I don't know, this city right here of worms. And uh, yeah, we all it takes is just a single war declaration. Like, say, this one right here. Then we take our lovely nuclear bomb. A bit vaguely in this direction and a uh, yeet. Fantastic stuff. And the city is gone. Ah, glorious, glorious success. Ah, fantastic. Well, I think that should generally make them a little bit upset. And um, I would also say that we've done a pretty decent job of wiping out their entire civilization. And of course, we're now perpetually locked at plus two million army upkeep, no matter what we do. It's fantastic. It's amazing. We can spend all of these units and launch all of these these nuclear missiles. Anything can be hit, including these random AIs, because why not? So bam, it's time for another glorious nuclear missile launch. And away it goes, ladies and gentlemen. Goodbye, random independent peoples. Lovely stuff. Oh, it's fantastic. Oh, it's perfectly balanced. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Today we have proven that humankind is completely and utterly broken. Everything in it is broken, and it is gloriously good fun. If you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to give it a like, and why not hop on down to the comment section and play your undying support to the Soviets, because of course, if you don't, a nuclear bomb will be flying towards you in just a few moments' time. You have five seconds to subscribe, or you will, of course, spontaneously die. Anyway, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching. As always, a massive thank you to each and every one of our amazing patrons who make these videos all the more possible. Seriously, thank you very much, you lovely sausages. And hey, if you're sat there wondering what video you'd like to watch next, look no further than this one on screen now, hand chosen by myself to be absolutely perfect for you. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next next one. Have a lovely day and goodbye for now.